The operator of the Fukushima nuclear power plant is no longer saying a continuous nuclear reaction or a criticality took place in the damaged number two reactor. Tokyo Electric Power Company, or TEPCO, said the small amount of xenon-135 it detected near the reactor's containment vessel was the result of the spontaneous nuclear fission of radioactive elements. Spontaneous fission refers to the fission of radioactive materials other than uranium. It does not lead to criticality. Such fission is said to occur constantly. TEPCO says a point of criticality would have resulted in higher levels of xenon it says it will send the assessment to the Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency for re-evaluation. We asked NHK senior commentator Noriyuki Mizuno for some perspective on what's happening at Fukushima Daiichi. Here's some of what he had to say through simultaneous interpretation. It's not in a critical condition, but close monitoring must continue to avoid criticality. Melted uranium fuel is believed to be scattered everywhere in the number two reactor and its containment vessel. A neutron ray may be causing nuclear fission from time to time. So long as this reaction is localized and temporary, there is no need to worry about. But this time, the location of melted fuel or the amount of water inside is believed to be creating a condition suitable for continuous nuclear fission. Having said that, there is no change in the temperature or pressure in the containment vessel. TEFCO is pouring boric acid solution to suppress nuclear fission. So it's unlikely that huge amount of radioactive substances will be released from the reactor. The government has been saying it aims to achieve a state of cold shutdown by the end of the year. It means bringing the temperatures inside the reactor under 100 degrees Celsius with the release of radioactive materials substantially reduced. But if nuclear fission occurs, even temporarily, new radioactive substances will be released, so it's difficult to declare that a situation has been brought under control. First and foremost, the condition inside the reactor must be grasped in detail. How much melted fuel still remains inside the reactor, how much of it has fallen into the containment vessel, is the fuel submerged in the water, those kinds of things. Of course, we cannot see the inside of the reactor directly, so various computer simulations would help us grasp the condition to some extent. If we know that nuclear fission is likely, we can change the water injection method to prevent it from happening. The nuclear fission may be taking place in number one and number three reactors as well, as they also have melted fuel. So we need to know the conditions of other reactors in detail. That was NHK's senior commentator, Noriyuki Mizuno. Tokyo Electric Power Company's shareholders are poised to launch court procedures and demand that the utility's current and former management return more than $14 billion to the firm. About 30 shareholders plan to file a class action lawsuit against roughly 60 executives who worked at TEPCO over the past two decades. They claim that management failed to take adequate safety measures to protect the plant from an earthquake and tsunami waves. The investors say they will take legal action if the company refuses to demand that executives return a huge sum of money. Observers say that if the shareholders go to court, the financial compensation requested would be the largest in Japan's judicial history. TEPCO says it can't comment on the lawsuit until it knows more details.
This is an official civil defense film produced in cooperation with the Federal Civil Defense Administration and in consultation with the Safety Commission of the National Education Association. Produced by Archer Productions, Incorporated. Hey, Bert, come on out and meet all these nice people, please. Oh, all right. We really can't blame you. You see, Bert is a very, very careful fellow. When there's danger, this is the way he keeps from being hurt. Sometimes, it even saves his life. That's why these children are practicing to duck and cover, just as you do in your school. We all know the atomic bomb is very dangerous. Since it may be used against us, we must get ready for it, just as we are ready for many other dangers that are around us all the time. Fire is a danger. It can burn whole buildings if someone is careless. But we are ready for fire. We have a fine fire department to put out the fire. And you have fire drills in your school so you know what to do. Automobiles can be dangerous too. They sometimes cause bad accidents, but we are ready. We have safety rules that car drivers and people who are walking must obey. Now, we must be ready for a new danger, the atomic bomb. First, you have to know what happens when an atomic bomb explodes. You will know when it comes. We hope it never comes, but we must get ready. It looks something like this. There is a bright flash, brighter than the sun, brighter than anything you've ever seen. If you are not ready and did not know what to do, it could hurt you in different ways. It could knock you down hard or throw you against a tree or a wall. It is such a big explosion, it can smash in buildings and knock signboards over and break windows all over town. But if you duck and cover like Bert, will be much safer. You know how bad sunburn can feel. The atomic bomb flash could burn you worse than a terrible sunburn, especially where you're not covered. Now, you and I don't have shells to crawl into like Bert the Turtle, so we have to cover up in our own way. First, you duck, and then you cover. And very tightly, you cover the back of your neck and your face. Duck and cover underneath a table or desk or anything else close by. In Betty's school, they are talking about the atomic bomb, too. Betty is asking her teacher, how can we tell when the atomic bomb may explode? And her teacher is explaining that there are two kinds of attack, with warning and without any warning. We think that most of the time we will be warned before the bomb explodes, 